If you're a beginning photographer and you're asked to get a nice portrait of somebody in an environment like this, it might feel like you are at war with your environment. There's just no good light, the background looks horrible, but I'm gonna tell you five things you can do to get a great portrait when you're outside in a horrible environment like this. So we're gonna run to battle and get some great stuff. So number one, the first thing you wanna do is run for cover. That's right, you don't wanna shoot out here in this horrible, horrible light. You wanna get into the shade. So I'm gonna run over here to the shade. Ah! Yes, ah, oh, so much better. Now over here in the shade, I am being joined by Carissa and Kelsey. Hi guys. And so what we're gonna do is we are going to take portraits of Carissa. Now the nice thing is about running to cover is now we have nice soft light. It's not so harsh. And not only are we running to cover to find some kind of shade, it doesn't matter what kind of shade, you just need to get into the shade. Also look for a background that isn't the sky. And so way back behind us, there's a building and some trees and that's gonna make it a little bit darker, and so we don't have to have this crazy exposure. So what we're gonna do now is, Carissa, let's have you go back almost all the way to the end of the shade, and I'm gonna come up here, and we are going to do number two, which is use a big gun. That's right. On your kit lens, if you've got a camera with a kit lens, you'll notice that you have like a 55 to maybe two or 300 millimeter lens. Well, you don't wanna get really close to your subject and use the short end of the lens. Oh no, you wanna use the big guns. You wanna zoom all the way in. And the reason for that is it's going to narrow the angle of view. It's going to clean things up. It's going to isolate your subject and give you a great shot. Now also, you need to set your camera to attack mode. That's right, there's a little mode right here. It's called A for attack. Actually, it's not A for attack. It's A for aperture priority mode. But if you can remember A for attack, that's going to be great. What that will do is it will allow the aperture to open wide up and that will give you a nice shallow depth of field. Now, if you don't know what that means, it doesn't matter. What it really means is the background is going to fall away. The one important thing to remember is you need to set your aperture value to the lowest number possible. So on this camera right now, 5.6 is the lowest number. So it doesn't matter what it is, just go to the lowest number possible. All right, the other thing we wanna do is we wanna blast them. That's right, we wanna use a flash to really make things pop. To help me out with that, we have Kelsey. And Kelsey has this. This is a flash, and it's inside this nice Rogue flash bender. It's a diffusion kit. If you don't know exactly which one, that's okay. Just look at the links at the bottom of this video if you're watching on YouTube, and I'll have a link exactly to this product. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna pop a little bit of light into Carissa's face to give her a little bit of uh, separation from the background, but we don't really wanna just have a bare flash. Oh no, we're gonna blast them, but number five, <laughs> we're gonna soften the blow. So we're adding this nice diffusion panel so we get nice soft light. So we're gonna have Kelsey go all the way really close to Carissa. We're gonna put all these things together. We ran to cover, we're using our big gun. We have our camera set to attack. We're gonna blast them and we're gonna soften the blow. Let's put all that stuff together take a few shots and I'll show you how this works. All right, we're all set up. And oh, I forgot to tell you one thing. How do I make that flash fire? Well, on this Nikon, what I have is a built-in trigger for that flash. If you've got a Canon, you might have the, uh, the new radio-controlled Canon. You could use a pocket wizard. It doesn't matter. There are a bunch of different ways that you can trigger a remote flash. And if you don't know exactly how to do that, well, check her out, Adorama TV and Adorama Learning Center, because we have a bunch of episodes uh, specifically about triggering remote flashes. So let's get to it. We have everything set up. Carissa is looking right at me. Give me a smile. Perfect. We're going to do uh, two more there. Yes, that is great. Look at that. We've got a great portrait that we shot using our five tricks. So there you have it. Remember, run to cover. Set your camera into attack mode. Use a big gun. Blast them and soften the blow. You're going to get some great portraits that work every single time.